Good morning. How does God bring judgment against Judah? Our passage today is at Jeremiah chapter 13, verses 12 to 14. Therefore you shall speak to them this word. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Every bottle shall be filled with wine. And they will say to you, Do we not certainly know that every bottle will be filled with wine? Then you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings who sit on David's throne, the priests and the prophets and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness, and I will dash them with one against another, even the fathers and sons together, says the Lord. I will not pity nor spare nor have mercy, but will destroy them. Oh, that's a pretty intense word there, but I think there's good reason. So the die is cast now, Babylon will come up. She'll come up through the Fertile Crescent and invade from the north. The people haven't turned. Remember the analysis from Jeremiah 13, 10. It says right there, these are evil people. They refuse to hear. They turn to their own doings of their own evil heart. And they're even invested, of all things, in the worship of idols. These people are nowhere near being in harmony with the law of God. So then the text says God will fill them with drunkenness. Who is he going to fill with drunkenness? Well, the kings, the priests, the false prophets, they're all going to get the inhabitants of the land. They're all going to be filled with drunkenness. Well, that, that's kind of strange because in the Bible, we have the, word, uh, the words for drunk and drunkenness. It's almost always a negative association. It's used about 10 times by Isaiah and about 10 more by the writings of Jeremiah. And there's, there's many, many more references. God wants us to live responsibly. He gave us free will. He doesn't want us to be uninhibited morally. And that's exactly what wine drinking will do. It'll cause us to be uninhibited morally. So why then this? Why does God say he'll fill the inhabitants of the land with drunkenness? You know, one of the things we also see is in, especially in Bible prophecy, drunkenness is often permitted by God when rulers or people go against his wishes. And then he says, I'm going to make them drunk. Or even by his permissive, by him not intervening, he, lets, he leaves them to the devils and the devils get them out into crazy stuff. So when God's protection is withdrawn, it's as though they go crazy. They become drunken, drunken with power. Only it's not their power. The devils are, are actually laughing about it. So God opposes those who make themselves drunk. In fact, Jeremiah, it's quoted from Jeremiah in the book of Revelation, chapters 17 and 18, about the nations being drunk. When God's protection is withdrawn, men are left to themselves. And that's the most dangerous thing you can do is be left to yourself. We want to have God's protection all the time. When we're left to the devils, we're going to do the will of the devils, and they're just going to love it. So now the leaders in Judah, they'll be left to themselves. God can't do anything for them. They've refused all of his protections, and God's going to let them be filled with the madness of demonic influence. And so there's no greater punishment than to be drunken with power that isn't power, popularity that's not real popularity, with freedom that's not freedom, and with riches that aren't riches. And if you don't believe me, go and look and see how things are going for the secular politicians, the rich people, the people in Hollywood. Uh, most of those people have so much emptiness in their lives, they don't know what to do with themselves, and they practically go out and destroy themselves. We don't want that. And when we're left to ourselves, that's the likely thing to happen. We want to be on God's team, with, in God's plan. God, help us to be on your side so that the tornado of meaninglessness is, doesn't take us down. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to be right. Help us to be right in our hearts, Lord. Help us to find your ways and go your ways. Please, Lord, you be our guide. You show us your values. Help us to know we're not independent from you. Help us not to fall into the trap that uh, the devils took Judah into, basically all the way into. Help us, Lord, to avoid that in these last days. The church is prone to these kind of problems today, too. So help us, Lord. May, may we get up every morning. May we spend some time in your word every morning, praying every morning. And may you transform our heart every morning brand new. Help us to be converted again this morning, just like every other morning. This is our prayer today. Again, we ask in Jesus' name, amen. So how does God bring judgment against Judah? Well, he lets them have their own way. And the whole nation is going to be swept away to Babylon. May it not be so with us. God be with you today.